Hey everyone! So today I'm going to play the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe for the very first time. I've um, played the first one, the Stanley Parable, and many of you have asked me if I'd play video games, and I used to a long time ago, maybe like four or five years ago, I was more into video games, and I still kind of play them from time to time, but um, yeah, today we're going to play the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, and uh, what this is, is uh, kind of like an adventure game, and uh, as you continue on this adventure, you get berated by the narrator the entire way, so I'm kind of like keeping my uh, eyes and ears open and kind of being open to what's going to happen, so we'll see. <laughs> All right, we have a bunch of our uh, viewers in ch uh, the chat. Clara, Jose, Costa, no, Jose and Costa, Hung Mao. Let's uh, see how many people tune in here. Since this is uh, way different than what I normally do, I usually don't play video games on my channels. This is going on Action Kid Extra. So we will see. All right. Uh, Christian asking if the audience can participate. Well, you can interact with me on the um, on the live chat, but you won't be able to really. Uh... Well, actually, maybe maybe I could put polls up to like find out where I need to go and stuff. This is a video game, so anyway, let's uh let's go right into this game. I'm uh, excited to play it, so. I gotta go to Steam. Steam is the uh, the software I need to play it. I already have it downloaded. I just bought this game like in the past half an hour. I haven't even opened it yet. So here we go. Okay. Please choose a screen and subtitle language. First of all, can you all hear me go correctly? Can you hear the game? Did you hear that menu sound? Hey, Super Friends in the City is here. Welcome. Well, Super Friends NYC as well. Uh, let's see. Oops, I didn't want that. Can you hear these clicks on the menu? There's an intermittent buzz. Why? Why would that happen? Now I'm, uh, now I'm confused. I think the buzz might happen to the, uh, with the connection in the back. Let me try fixing it. I thought I had it fixed before. I plugged in the phone a little bit more. I mean, what happens with audio is because uh, if too many cables are near each other or like a phone is some somewhere near, it starts to affect the, uh, the audio, which is annoying. Let me try plugging in the USB cable on the further USB port if that'll work. I hate to troubleshoot audio again after I spent a lot of time on it. Okay. Any more buzzing? I disconnected a cable. That was near it. And uh, I plugged it into the further 
port. The bus stopped. Okay, that's good. So uh, let's get into this game now. Please select a subtitle language. Let's do English. Confirm. Have I played the Stanley Parable before? Yes, I have. But uh, I'm sure many of you haven't, so maybe I'll click no. Because uh, many of you are probably unfamiliar with how this game works or how the original was, so let's hit no. Please adjust the slider until the computer is barely visible. Okay. Oh, well. Well, I had to go all the way down. I could still see it. Actually, uh, barely visible. Maybe I should go up to here, because I can kind of see the outline of the monitor now. The current time. Why does it want to know the time for? <laughs> it's uh, 4.37 p.m. Is it a trick question? The time for me, I guess it's not the time for everybody. Hey. Oh, you got to do this. I hate when clocks do this. You got to go past uh 12 in order for it to change all right accessibility settings all right okay i'm playing the stanley parable ultra deluxe and uh i'm in the way of the menu now you can't see me but let me just drag my oop, i don't want to drag that i'll drag myself up here so now you can see uh let's go to settings because field of view mouse sensitivity uh one-handed walking hold left and right mouse buttons to walk audio video resolution seems to be okay i need my full monitor's resolution quality Hi. Controls. All right. W A S A D. W S A D. That's a uh, normal FPS. Uh, controls. Jump. Spacebar. Interact. E. I'm used to these controls. Oh, that's out. That's all. That's all the controls. It's very similar to an FPS game. Let's go back. All right. Let's read some comments. It's uh, 4.38 now, yeah. Now the time changed. I hear Crickus, you haven't played a video game in years and you miss it. Well, we'll see how this is. Uh, yeah, it is an old-fashioned desktop computer. <laughs> Begin the game. The end is never the end. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on the keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. <laughs> this is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. Seems like a very good job, right? Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. I can do that too. Stanley! Something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No uh -oh. one showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. 
Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clear. Uh oh. What happened at his job? Solid. Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Uh. Oh, I can move around now. Let me, uh, go here and move myself back to the lower left corner. Maybe make myself a little bit smaller so you can see more of the game. Okay. So, now we're playing the game. I can move around. Let's see. Look up. I can't jump. Can I crouch? Yep. Is there anything under the desk? W A S D. All right. So, uh, I kind of know what's going to happen because I played the original game, but many of you for this is new, so we will see. Oh, is the game sound uh, not loud enough? Do I need to increase it? Okay, I raised it just a little bit. Let's see. Okay. None of these drawers are opening. I can't I can't continue my work at my desk. I'm Stanley, but I can't do any work. What's going on? Oh the desk it's not loud enough still. Oh no. Oh it's good? Alright, let me increase it just a little bit more. Okay. Let's see how this is. Oh, Stanley's got a pencil sharpener too and some papers. What does that say? I hate Mondays. <laughs> Today's Monday, go figure. <laughs> oh my gosh. Whoa. All right, we got a hallway. 428's office. Can we go in? No, we can't. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Hmm. Stanley found all his co-workers gone. Another cup mug was saying, I hate Mondays. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. That's right. Where are Stanley co-workers? Is he the only one working here? Who farted? <laughs> I hear Krigus wants me to type 427 on the computer. I didn't get to read what it was on that computer screen before I pressed the use button. I can't interact with the computer more than what the game can allow me to do. I like work, just hate my boss. I'm sure that's a lot of people, right? We hate our boss. Look at the phone, all right. Look at this. This is like 1990s. All right, let's go to the meeting room. Looks like Bob Ross. Because he likes to paint like mountains and stuff. Okay. Yeah, none of Stanley's co-workers are here. Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference. Nor did it advance the story in any way. <laughs> He's touching everything in the office. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> this narrator's hilarious. Oh. 
Hey. Oh shoot. I hate Mondays. Nice leaf. Ooh. A lot of these doors are locked. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. He entered the door on his left. Hmm. What happens if we ignore the narrator and we go to the right? <laughs> Let's try. We're gonna go to the right. We'll be rebellious. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, we're going to the employee lounge, I guess. None of these doors work. Ah. <sighs> Yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. It's a nice room. <laughs> what does it say? There's like a letter on the ground. Yes, really, really worth it being here in the room. A room so utterly captivating that even though all your co-workers have mysteriously vanished, here you sit looking at these chairs and some paintings. Really worth it. Hey, isn't that what I do when I walk around and make videos, right? Hey! At this point, Stanley's obsession with this room <laughs> bordered on creepy and reflected poorly on his overall personality. It's possible that this is why everyone left. <laughs> Hey, look at this, look at this ocean, it's amazing, right? This Stanley leaf. sat around waiting for more dialogue, but when a long time had passed and there was no more, he decided that the game was trying to send him a message. <laughs> oh man, this game's hilarious. <laughs> but at last, he'd had enough of the amazing room, and took the first open door on his left to get back to business. Okay. <laughs> the first open door on my left. Uh, let's not go in there. Uh, yeah, let's go back in there. Let's go follow the story. <laughs> and so he detoured through the maintenance section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door, and got back on track. And you could take this elevator down if you want to, also. All right, let's follow the story. Why not? Let's go this way. Backwards. Oh, door is locked. We got we got to go back the other way. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief. Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Where's all the co-workers? This is kind of creepy. Meeting schedule. Monday. Weekly targets. Admin. Marketing Mondays. Oh my gosh. Do not alter without consulting whiteboard manager. <laughs> Number of slides on this slide. <laughs> what is what kind of job does Stanley do? Doesn't seem like it has any meaning, right? What? The boss appreciation minute.
broom closet. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. There was nothing here, no choice to make, no path to follow, just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. No reason to be in the broom closet? It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. Hey, let's look at the bristles of this are you, broom. Are you really still in the broom closet? Standing around doing nothing? Why? Please offer me some explanation here. I'm, I'm genuinely confused. I'm confused too. Why is the narrator berating us for being in the no closet? Choice or anything in here, right? If I'd said Stanley walked past the broom closet, at least you would have had a reason for exploring it to find out. But it didn't even occur to me because literally this closet is of absolutely no significance to the story whatsoever. I never would have thought to mention it. <laughs> hey, we gotta hear the narrator speak. Maybe to you this is somehow its own branching path. Maybe when you go talk about this with your friend, you'll say, Oh, did you get the broom closet ending? The broom closet ending was my favorite. I hope your friends find this concerning. Oh my gosh. All right. Stanley was fat and ugly and really, really stupid. He probably only got the job because of a family connection. That's how stupid he is. That all with drug money. Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. <laughs> oh, man. I'm crying. I'm laughing so hard. Conclusion about what's going on right now. You're dead. You got to this broom closet, explored it a bit, and were just about to leave because there's nothing here <laughs> when a physical malady of some sort shut down your central nervous system and you collapsed on the keyboard. Well, in a situation like this, the responsible thing is to alert someone nearby so as to ensure that your body is taken care of before it begins to decompose. Hello? Anyone who happens to be nearby? The person at this computer is dead. They have fallen prey to any number of your countless human physiological vulnerabilities. It's indicative of the long-term sustainability of your species. Please remove their corpse from the area and instruct another human to take their place, making sure they understand basic first-person video game mechanics and filling them in on the history of narrative tropes in video gaming so that the irony and insightful commentary of this game is not lost on them. All right, when you've done that, just step out into the hallway. Oh, man. Oh, man. Is the narrator say anything more? <laughs> is there a broom closet ending? <laughs> huh. All right. I don't think the narrator is uh, saying anything more, so we got to get out of this broom closet. Ah, second player. It's good to have you on board. I guarantee you can't do any worse than the person who came before you. <laughs> Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Stanley's boss, is he gonna be around? Thomas, you know, say he couldn't figure out the restroom code, so he proceeded to take a piss in the mop bucket inside the broom closet. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hey, speaking of bathroom, this executive bathroom here. Oh. What's in the executive bathroom? Oh man. You think Stanley's boss is raking in the money? 
extreme bathrooms. What does that say? I don't know, it's too small. Huh. Look at these old phones, like, they have to be back in like the 90s. <laughs> Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him, and so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 28 Four, five. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. What? Oh, here. We gotta put the, uh... Stanley just sat around twiddling his thumbs. Trying to input anything on the device was useless, since he could never possibly know that the combination was <laughs> 2845. Yeah, how does Stanley know what the combination is? Two, eight, four, five. <laughs> Forgot, but it turns out that the panel's emergency override kicked in. And the door just opened <laughs> all by itself. And Stanley got the hell along with the story. Well, whoop de do. <laughs> the emergency override. <laughs> Three, eight, four, five. Oh, gosh. Is there another path back here? It's so dark. What are we going to see in the elevator? Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. JS says one two three four is also the code to the airlock system for Planet Judah. Oh, I wonder if there's any kind of code we could put in there that'll change the story. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, this narrator is a uh, very hard on Stanley. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Oh my gosh. That doesn't seem good, guys. A mind control facility. Let's, uh. You know what? I'm gonna let you guys decide if I should go to the mind control facility or escape. So, we'll put a poll up. Okay, let's get uh, interactive here. I think I'll let this poll go for like a minute.
I think it's gonna be a bad ending going to mind control facility, who knows? Seems that uh, Mind Control Facility is winning right now with 45 votes. Alright, I think we're going into the Mind Control Facility. Let's go. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold, Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? What is this place? Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each what? bore the number of an employee in the building. Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen. And Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. Employee fired, wow. This is kind of creepy. There's like all these surveillance cameras everywhere. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? What are we gonna do? Blow up the mind control no. facility? He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! It was unthinkable, wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content, walking, eating, wow. working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. All right, so uh, I guess we're shutting down the mind control facility. System power. And when at last he found the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty, his obligation, to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. Off. Uh oh. blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty was it over it's never over yes he had won he had defeated the machine unshackled himself from someone else's command freedom was mere moments away and yet even as the immense door slowly opened Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking. Stanley escaped, all right. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. 
No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And Ooh. that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Yay! We beat the game. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon But the there's skin, multiple endings. The feeling of liberation. The immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. Yeah, Stanley escaped, but we don't know the other mysteries, what happened. Alright, achievement unlocked, beat the game. Even though we we ignore the narrator. And uh, we're back in the beginning again. You get to play this game over and over. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Let's not go to the meeting room this time. We'll be a rebellious. We'll disregard everything the narrator says. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors. He entered the door on his left. Right door. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Yeah. Wow. Yes. This room. What a beautiful room. What a gorgeous, gorgeous room. Thank goodness Except this Stanley papers had taken on the this ground. <laughs> on his way to the meeting room. Life without having experienced this room was now too horrible even to consider. <laughs> so Stan say is maybe Stanley would go down the rabbit hole. But like Alice and back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Nope. Stanley ain't listening to any of that. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Stanley's so bad at following directions. Warning, do not jump from the cargo lift while it is in motion. What happens if we do this? But in his eagerness to prove that he is in control of the story and no one gets to tell him what to do, Stanley leapt from the platform and plunged to his death. Good job, Stanley. Everyone thinks you are very powerful. <laughs> Good job, Stanley. <laughs> All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Oh, that must have hurt. <laughs> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. The lounge was sublime. Oh, oh it's a different. What was it about this room not commentary. that called so deeply and so personally to Stanley? Its grace, its subtle charm. No, Stanley knew it was something deeper, something darker. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Nope. <laughs> Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. Uh-oh. This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. She's been waiting. 
What happened? Is Stanley in trouble now? That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this. To reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. What? Can we unplug the phone? As Stanley picked up the phone, a white light engulfed him, filling him not just with radiance, but with hope. Hope for a life reunited one- Wow. Wait. Oh, goodness. Stanley, did you just unplug the phone? No, that wasn't supposed to be a choice. How did you do that? You actually chose incorrectly. I didn't even know that was possible. Let me double check. No, it's definitely here, clear as day. Stanley picks up the phone. He's taken to his apartment where he finds his wife and the two pledge themselves to one another. Music comes in, fade to white, roll credits. Not picking up the phone is actually somehow an incorrect course of action. Wow, I missed a How good ending. Impossible? None of these decisions were supposed to mean anything. I don't understand. How on earth are you making meaningful choices? What did you... Wait a second. Did I just see... No, that's not possible. I can't believe it. How had I not noticed it sooner? You're not Stanley. You're a real person. <sighs> I can't believe I was so mistaken. This is why you've been able to make correct and incorrect choices. And to think I've been letting you run around in this game for so long. If you've made any more wrong choices, you might have negated it entirely. It's as though you completely ignored even the most basic safety protocol for real-world decision-making. Or did you not grasp the severity of the situation? Well, I won't have that kind of risk on my watch. I'm going to stop the game for a moment so we can educate you properly on safe decision-making in the real world. Please observe this helpful instructional video. Choice. It's the best part of being a real person. But if used incorrectly, can also be the most dangerous. For example, in this scenario, a hypothetical real person named Rupert has a choice. He could invent a machine that eliminates food choice. shortages across the world to make life better for all people. Or he could spend years of hard work forgetting how to read. This looks like an Which old commercial. Which choice would you make? Remember that unlike here, the real world makes sense. And at no time should you make a choice that does not conform to rational logic. If you find yourself speaking with a person who does not make sense, in all likelihood, that person is not real. Allow the person to finish their thought, then provide an excuse why you cannot continue talking. Turn to a partner and practice saying, my goodness, is it 4.30? I'm supposed to be having a back sack and crack. Excellent. What? Making choices on a regular basis what? is the best part to a healthy decision-making process. Most medical professionals recommend making at least eight choices per day. Do you make more than eight? Less? And finally, if you begin to wonder if your choices are actually meaningful and whether you'll ever make a significant contribution to the world, just remember that in the vast infiniteness of space, your thoughts and problems are materially insignificant, and the feeling should subside. At this time, your instructor will guide you in an exercise to test and reinforce the material covered in this video. Ah, welcome back. You may have noticed that this room has begun to Whoa. deteriorate as a result of narrative contradiction. But not to worry. Now that you're properly informed on good decision making, we're going to revisit a choice you made just a few minutes ago and see what the correct thing to do would have been. This way, please. Oh, wow. Yeah, Dutchman, it was for my Gator show. Uh, we have a spam bot in the chat. All right, what choice should we have made? Oh, wow. We actually have to go all the way back now? Now that we know your choices are meaningful, we can't have you jumping off the platform and dying. Imagine the main character dying senselessly halfway through the story. That story would make no sense at all. 
We just need to get you home as soon as possible before the night. <laughs> you put up a fancy because I went off the platform into hide. This place is not well equipped to deal with reality. <laughs> There's a fence over there too. Wait, we just can't squeeze in through here. <laughs> oh man. Hey, these doors are opening for me now. <laughs> Almost there. You'll take the door on the left, back to the correct ending, the story will have resolution once again, and you'll be home free in the real world. All right. Now we can follow the story. Now remember, all you need to do is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. The door on his left. The door on the right. No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry back in the other direction. Perhaps we're not too late. Whoa. What is going on? Whoa. Oh my gosh. I think we're going to break the game. Oh, it's ruined. You Whoa. can't believe after everything we talked about that you... My story, you've destroyed my work. Why? For what? What did you get out of that? What did you think was so special about seeing the game undone? Left here like so much garbage. It, well, it's worthless now. And what am I supposed to do? Even if there were a way to continue, would it be worth it? To know that my story is now incorrect? How can I go back to that? I can't erase that knowledge. I'll have to live with it forever. Reliving its impossibility forever. Uh -oh. no, I couldn't live that way. Is it better to shut the game down entirely? To willingly destroy all of my work? I don't know. What's the answer? What do I do? What do I do? What do I... Uh-oh. No, I have What to. do you do? I have to shut the game down. I have to. I have to. Uh-oh. What's going on? Oh, I'm, I'm here. I'm still here. Here in this pile of rubbish. With you. You. Who thought you were so clever. Now look where we are. My entire game is destroyed. It was the only thing in the world that was mine and you run it into the ground. What, did you think that would be funny? You just had to see? Didn't I impress upon you how important it was to be like Stanley? He actually knows how to do what I tell him to. He understands that if I say to do something, there's a damn good reason for it. That thought hadn't even occurred to you, had it? That there's a world outside of you. You're a child. Oh, my story. Poor narrator. If you'd just story. gone through the door on the left, you would have seen it. There was a whole underground facility. You would have destroyed it and been victorious. It would have been so perfect. I worked so hard on it. I tried so hard to make... Uh-oh. ...is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and what? always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Oh my gosh, this game. <laughs> Did he just restart? Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Room closets. <laughs> the broom closet. You can't go in the broom closet. Oh, man. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. 
Oh man. Uh Rosa, how long is this game? It could be as long as you want to. There's uh multiple endings to this game. Wait, where's the executive bathroom? Did they lock that too? Stepping inside his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this until he saw the door with a voice receiver. Wait, next this to is it. different now. Surely behind this door lay all the answers to his questions. Before there was that emergency pin pad. He knew the passcode. He had seen it on his boss's computer just last week. Night Shark 115. Was this the code to open the door? Would it still work? There was only one way to find out. Stanley had been trained never to speak up, but now he would draw from within himself the courage to face the unknown. He drew a sharp breath and then spoke the code. Stanley can't talk. <clears throat> Stanley spoke the code. Night Shark 115. He spoke it into the receiver right there on the wall. Stanley is a mute. I'm sorry, is there a problem? You didn't mishear me, did you? Please speak the code into the receiver. Otherwise, we can't get on with the story. This is a crucial step. Maybe there's an emergency override for this one, too. <laughs> okay, fine. You're not going to do it. But you know what? It's pretty humiliating to bring you this far, only for you to suddenly decide you have better things to do. I asked you for this one single thing, for your respect. The kind of respect Stanley shows for his choices. He knows what it means to take a story seriously. If you didn't want to see what I had to show you, then why did you come here? You had a choice, you know. You could have gone through the door on the right. You could have done whatever the hell you wanted over there. Why did you come this way? Speak. Say something to me. Explain yourself, you coward. You... Wow. Couldn't have done whatever the hell you wanted. Into a set of two open doors, he entered the door. What? What is this? Hello? Are you... Is everything okay? Stanley, please. I I need you to make a choice. I need you to walk through the door. Are you listening to me? Can you hear me? Is everything all right? Stanley, this is important. The story needs you. It needs you to make a decision. It cannot exist without you. Do you understand me? Whatever choice you make is just fine. They're both correct. You cannot be wrong here. We can work together. I'll accept whatever you wow. do. I simply need you to take that step forward, please. Choose. Do something. The game's broken. This is more important than you can ever know. I need this. The story needs it. So, you hear me? Are you there? Are you listening to this? Stanley, are you there? Okay. It's okay, I can wait. You need time to decide. Time oh, I feel sure bad for the narrator now. Is the best choice. That's all right. I'll wait for you to decide what's the right thing to do. Mm. Take as much so time sad. Okay, we're back again to Stanley's desk. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go mean? to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Stanley. All the doors are locked. Mr. Look again saying, uh, is this game free? No, you have to pay for it. Stanley came to a set of two open doors 
He entered the door on his left. Okay, let's go left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Hey. Room closet's open. Oh no. Oh no 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 not again. I won't be part of this. I'm not going to encourage you. I'm not going to say anything at all. I'm just going to be patient and wait for you to finish whatever it is you enjoy doing so much in this room. Please take your time. Oh my gosh. The broom closet. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. We're going downstairs. Whoa. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his This is such a car from the cars. 90s. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did Ooh. doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange, this can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. It's oh, a dream. What a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. Oh, man. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So Where are Stanley's co-workers? And began to gently float above the Whoa. ground. Whoa! Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field. And it too appeared. It was so what? much fun. And Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he Wait. was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? These now rooms the are the same! Describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, I keep running into the same room. In what if I go back? The truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving uh -oh. himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew oh, for certain, beyond a doubt that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control, that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. Stanley's I'm waking up. This dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. 
Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. Stanley is not good. Whoa. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. Oh, boy. Stanley! This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Mariella, Mariella. was like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. Is that he Stanley? Was crazy. This much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this. And in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career. And by extension, the rest of her life. She had no Poor time for Stanley. This, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. Okay. We're back here. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley this decided looks to go completely to the different now. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. I think there's a new part of the game that they added. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. The right. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Standing now in this incredible room, Stanley for the first time understood true happiness. Then the feeling went away, and he felt sad. The again. happiness room. Then it came back and lingered for a minute or two. Now it's only half there. Just a kind of, um, <laughs> tingle. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Okay. And so he detoured through the maintenance section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door, and got back on track. Alright, let's escape this time. See what happens. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's <laughs> office, hoping he might find an answer there. We can't go to the broom closet. It is boarded up. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Executive bathroom. All right. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. What could it mean? Stanley wondered aloud to no one. He began four, five, tearing right? through papers on the boss's desk. Pulling book, Stanley was in such a rush to get through the story as quickly as possible, he didn't even have a single minute to just let the narrator talk. That kind of anxiety isn't healthy. 
so he relaxed for a few moments with some calming New Age music. <laughs> Get this story done. Oh man, Back it up. and rejuvenated, Stanley calmly walked forward into the opened <laughs> passageway. Oh man. <laughs> Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. No, we're escaping. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. Uh oh. <laughs> What's at the end? The door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. At this point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. Let's do it! Let's confront our death, or Stanley's death. Oh! As the machine whirred into motion, and Stanley was inched closer and closer to his demise, he reflected uh -oh. that his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. Stanley can't see the bigger picture. He doesn't know the real story. Trapped forever How do we get out of this? What this world is. Perhaps his death was of no great loss, like plucking the eyeballs from a blind man. And so he resigned and willingly accepted this violent uh -oh. end to his brief and shallow life. Farewell, Stanley. No. Ah. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator, as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body. What happened? Him instantly. Who is this Nari? Oh! What? And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? I don't know. When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? Gotta get rid of these uh, spam bots. It's annoying. Gaga Bushi says he loved this game. I had to tell my kid cracking up at how he remembers any sweet FA <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Office layout. Oh. This blueprint shows the office from the beginning of the game. The path from Stanley's out to the two is the first part of the game ever built. Sections have been added and altered throughout development. Oh. So you see everything. Office computers. Oh. 
We got the credits. Wait, we can go left or right here. Oh, so this is kind of like a development room. You get to see everything in the, uh, how they made this game. So we were just there, the mind control facility. Narration outtakes. Kevin writing the voice of the narrator recorded dialogue for the entire game. Three separate times over two years of development. These are the clips from early takes that were not used in the final game. Pushed the big red button. Ooh. Stanley Another pushed the big red button. Would get him right back on track. The freedom and the okay. We did that. Countdown desk, an early version of the ending. Another freedom ending. Monitor room elevator. Countdown room. I don't think we saw this before, the countdown room. <laughs> oh, look at these two. How they wish to destroy one another. How they wish to control one another. How they both wish to be free. Off. Can you see? Can you see how much they need one another? No, perhaps not. Sometimes these things cannot be seen. But listen to me. You can still save those two. You can stop the program before they both fail. Push what? escape and press quit. There's no other way to beat this game. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now and it'll be your only true choice. We're actually gonna Don't die now. It. Don't let time choose for you. Don't let time. Uh, what now? <laughs> what? What if we would have just quit there? <laughs> oh man. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. We're going to the meeting room. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might well, find an answer there. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. All right, we're going up to the bat boss's office. Ooh. I don't think this was open before. Elevator music. Which floor are we get going to?
Uh, is this elevator I'm gonna stop? What? It didn't go anywhere? Oh! I just kept pressing up. <laughs> okay. Okay, I think we all know the drill by now. Blah blah blah. Dark secrets. The keypad. Stanley pushes some. What? Buttons. Oh, hey, look! It's a new passageway. Kill surprise. Oh my gosh. <laughs> The narrator's like, oh, we know you already, we're gonna just open the door for you. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read, Mind Control Facility. Okay. Mind control facility. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? I played the original game and I don't think I got all the endings, but there's like so many different ones. And plus this is the, uh, the newer one, so they probably have even more. Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. I'm sure there's another ending we could get over here too. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? I may have to change the, uh, the YouTube chat to be subscribers only because uh, we have a very serious spam bot now so all right should be unsubscriber only man on uh, only mode no he refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! It was unthinkable, wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? Uh-oh. But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad, or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. You can uh, push some buttons here, I see. Well, as if we go down here.
Well, there's five. Why do they make different noises? Ah, huh. I think we have to do something here. One, two, three. Wait, where's three? I think we're over here. Yeah. Three. Where's four? We see five there. Where's four over here? Zero, five, two, one. Does that mean anything? Zero, one, four, two, zero, 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 one. But there's no zeros here. I think we have to continue on. <clears throat> Wait, there's a there's a button up there. Can we get up there? Looks like it's blocked off. Yeah, I guess we have to continue on. We might get the same ending, the freedom ending. Oh, you did press and when on at last, he found the source of the room's power. He knew it was his duty his obligation to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. On. Oh, Stanley, you didn't just activate the controls, did you? After they kept you enslaved all these years, you go and you try to take control of the machine for yourself. Is that what you wanted? Control? Oh, Stanley, I applaud you. Whoa. I really do. But you need to understand, there's only so much that machine can do. You were supposed to let it go, turn the controls off, and leave. If you want to throw my story off track, you're going to have to do much better than that. I'm afraid you don't have nearly the power you think you do. For example, and I believe you'll find this person. Oh, man. Stanley suddenly realized he had just initiated the network's emergency detonation system. In the event that this machine is activated without proper DNA identification, uh -oh. nuclear detonators are set to explode, eliminating the entire complex. How long until detonation then? Mm, let's say um, two minutes. Ah, now this oh. is making things a little more fun, isn't it, Stanley? It's your time oh. to shine. You are the star. It's your story now. <laughs> Shape it to your heart's desires. Oh, this is much better than what I had in mind. What a shame we have so little time left to enjoy it. Zero, 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 one. Until the bomb goes off. But what precious moments each one of them is. More time to talk about you, about me, where we're going. Is that open? Yeah, it is. What's up here? Zero, five, two, one. Two minutes. A minute and a half. Your co-workers are. A moment of solace before you're obliterated. Four. I'm in a good mood. You're gonna die anyway. That's four. I'll tell you exactly what happened to them. I erased them. I turned off the machine. I set you free. Where's zero? Oh, oh three. Gosh, that was merely in this instance of the story. Sometimes when I tell it, I simply let you sit there. Oh in shoot, office, we got a minute. Pushing buttons endlessly and then dying alone. One, one, zero. Other times, I let the office sink oh, shoot. the ground, swallowing everything. Zero, where's zero? Or I let it burn to a crisp. 
I have to say this though. This version Crap, we got less than a minute. Watching you try to make sense of everything and take one the control red away from you, it's quite rich. I almost hate to see it go. But I'm sure whatever I come up with on the next go around will be even better. My goodness, you have three attempts of seconds left. But I'm enjoying this so much. You know what? To hell with it. I'm going to put some extra time on the clock, huh. why not? These are precious additional seconds. Oh shoot. Time doesn't grow on trees. Oh dear me, what's the matter, Stanley? Is it that you have no idea where you're going or what you're supposed to be doing right now? Or did you just assume when you saw that timer that something in this room was capable of turning it off? I mean, look at you. Running from button to button, screen to screen, clicking on every little thing in this room. These numbered buttons. One attempt. Oh, these colored ones. Or maybe this big red button. Or this door. Everything. Oh, come on, Narrator. Stop teasing you. us. We got to take get rid of this, this video nuclear bomb. One solved. Five. Do you have any idea what your purpose in this place is? <laughs> oh, maybe we got to go one, two, three, four. One, You're in two, a disappointment. three. But here's a spoiler for you. That timer isn't a catalyst to keep the action moving along. It's just seconds ticking three. to your death. You're only still playing Four is up there. Cutscene because I want to watch you for every moment that you're powerless. To see you made humble. This is not a challenge. It's a We can do it. We can do it. Four. To control this world. That Five. Time. But I'm going to destroy it first, so you can't. Five is against the wall there. Take a look at the clock, Stanley. That's 30 seconds you have left to struggle. 30 seconds until a big... We got it, we got it! No ending here. Five! You being blown to pieces. Will you cling desperately to your frail life? No! Or will you let it go peacefully? No! Another choice. Make it count. Oh, no! It's all the same to me. Oh, no, oh, no! I'm oh, no! I will be lying. At every second of your inevitable life from the moment no! until the moment I say happily ever up. <laughs> oh Stanley Stanley Ah uh, What was I supposed to do there? <laughs> Oh man. Alright folks. Well uh I think I'm gonna wrap this up. I'm gonna heat up some leftovers and get some dinner, but maybe afterwards I'll go out to uh Miami Beach and I'll do a live stream there. But it's been fun playing the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe Edition. <laughs> I can't wait to play this game again and get berated some more by the narrator and blown up. So, it's been fun. See you later. Hi. <laughs> oh, man.